Hello my friends, welcome to the channel. Thank you for subscribing. Really appreciate your support, it means a lot. Now, EV as a revolution is absolutely taking hold and this is further evidence that the fossil fuel industry, the ice car industry, internal combustion industry will be dead by 2030. And I've been saying this for a long time, I'm going to stick to it. I think it might be dead even before then. Now, as you know, the UK has banned the sale of fossil fuel, pure fossil fuel engine vehicles, internal combustion engine vehicles in 2030. Now, some of you may be saying yes, but they haven't banned the sale of plug-in hybrids. But do you honestly believe that it will be cheaper to buy a plug-in hybrid in 2030 or a pure electric vehicle? So what do you think 99% of people will be buying? Remember, battery energy density continues to increase and improve. The cost of batteries continues to go down. If you want to add an internal combustion engine and a battery pack and all the systems you need to run that and then try and mate them together and somehow think that's not going to be significantly more expensive than a pure battery powered vehicle, then I've got a bridge to sell you. In more good news, Electric has reported that England will be the first country to require new homes to include EV chargers. And I really like this. I'm not normally a fan of government reg over-regulation, but I think in this area, this makes a lot of sense. Now, the British government will introduce legislation this year that will require all new homes and offices to feature electric vehicle chargers. Now, the legislation is saying that specifically all new homes and offices will have to feature smart charging devices that can automatically charge vehicles during off-peak periods. New office blocks will need to install a charge point for every five parking spaces. Now this new law is going to make England specifically the first country in the world to require all new homes to have EV chargers. And obviously it's going to massively boost confidence in helping those who transition from gas cars to overcome range anxiety, still an issue, as so many homes in England don't have off-street parking or garages. Now, apparently, Electric says that this new proposal is part of the movement to rapidly boost the number of charges across England ahead of the UK's 2030 ban on new fossil fuel vehicles. Now, the government originally announced a proposal to mandate that all new homes have a charge point with a parking space in 2019. Now, Nick Pocklington, CEO of clean energy company Good Energy said, flexible charging at home and at the workplace during the day is going to be crucial, decarbonizing not just transport, but the UK's entire energy system, as will better energy efficiency, electrified heating and solar power on 13.5 million homes. We hope to see all these as part of the plans for new homes too. Now the home and office EV charger mandate will start in 2022. So it's not happening in some far off place off into the distance, it's happening next year. In addition to this, the UK government has announced a free app called EV8 Switch yesterday on World EV Day. And it calculates how much money UK drivers can save by switching to an EV compared to their current petrol or diesel vehicle, along with details of the carbon dioxide savings and air quality improvements that they can achieve by driving an EV. Most people just have no idea the advantages of driving an EV. But every time I break my ICE car, I know it costs me money. How many people realize that every time they break their EV, it actually charges their battery and costs them nothing? That's one of the big differences that most people are just not aware of. Now. With this app, drivers can also see which electric vehicles would be the most suitable for them based on their current vehicle and how switching to electric could fit in their current lifestyle. Those with the app can also see how close their nearest charge points are and which journeys can be completed without the need to top up en route. It's a good idea, but I'm a little bit cynical about the power it would give the owners of the app, the government, to decide which cars they should market or sell. This, I'm not sure how this would happen. Uh, you'd think that this could potentially lead to conflicts of interest. But anyway, in general, I think it's a great idea. Now, obviously, one of the reasons that the EV revolution, well, one of the reasons that people say it's not going to happen or it's going to be slower than you say or 
potentially will never happen, this kind of nonsense that we're still hearing, is because they say that in apartment blocks, there's not enough charges. Well, does every house, does every apartment in an apartment block have a petrol station right now? No. Do most houses in the world have an ability to put an extension lead out to their car? Probably. It's not that much for hindrance after all, is it? And when you think about it, petrol stations in the future won't be petrol stations. They'll be battery charging stations and they'll be everywhere. There's already millions being built right now all around the world. So this incentive, in my opinion, is going to help to boost people's confidence so that they're more ready to switch to an EV. And like I just said, it's not like people have petrol stations at their houses, but to be able to power your car at your home is unreal. Now I'm going to share with you the most interesting response, negative response to this news that I found, which says that it's not sensible at all to do this. What would be sensible would be to simply install a 240 volt outlet and allow the consumer to choose the charger or provide an optional credit. Charger tech changes fast and there is consumer preference. It is stupid and wasteful for a government to mandate end user technology. It would be everyone needs a cell phone. So when you build a new home, you mandate that everyone comes with an iPhone. Now that cost and more mandates artificially raise prices is borne by me if I want it as or not, as a taxpayer, obviously. I prefer an Android, so now I need to buy another phone. For instance, I just use my provided TMC connected to my 240 volt Tesla in the US. I have no need for a 600 US dollar built in charger. So now I should would be forced to waste $600 plus say 2000 when it becomes mandated. And now you have a now you have more e-fuel for mandated foolishness. Worse, there is a push for wireless charging. So are they just going to bin thousands of dinosaur, dinosaur technology? Brilliant idea, not. Now, of course, I don't fully agree with this. And here was the best response to this comment, which said, Charger Tech does not change. Well, first of all, level two cables and wall boxes are not chargers. Exactly. They're not chargers. I don't know what this guy's talking about. The AC charger is built into the car. The cables and wall boxes are just a switch and a ground fault circuit interrupter. Since these are just switches, usually an electromechanical relay, power flows unaltered from mains to the car while charging and theoretically could flow unaltered from the car to the home. Also, power line communications between the car and the power utility flows unaffected through the cable or wall box. No special cable or wall box is required. Second, level two cables and wall boxes. Tesla excluded in both North America and Europe confirmed to the SAE J1772 signaling protocol developed in the 1990s and written in stone in 2001. It simply communicates four things over two pins. One, the state, standby charging, etc. Two, it tells the car's inbuilt charger the maximum current rating of the outlet. And three, if the cable is plugged in. And four, on type two cables, e.g. what's shown in the video where the cable plugs into the wall box as opposed to being permanently attached to the wall box, the maximum current rating at the cable. And that is all. Smart home chargers are just glorified timers and energy usage monitors. They don't communicate with the car at all. They don't know the car's state of charge when other than it's charging or it's not charging. They're not even chargers. As I said, the actual charger is built into the car. So, there's some information for you on really how this system works. The charger is built into the car. It's not actually built into the wall. This just enables you to more easily plug into your home, regardless of which electric car you have. Therefore, I believe it's a great idea and I hope more places, more, more houses have this in future. Hopefully this is mandated in lots of areas so that it encourages us to move to renewable energy. Now, remember, the UK is a really good example of what's how the world is changing, massively changing, right? For a period of more than 100 days last year, the UK ran primarily on renewable energy as its main energy source. The energy grid in the UK is dramatically moving away from fossil fuels massively. The change has been astronomical within the space of 24 months. 
to renewable energy, including specifically wind and also solar. There's a number of solar farms going up in the UK. The UK also has a number of huge batteries being built, including one being built by Tesla. And it won't be long, I would say maybe 2035 at the latest before at least 90% of the UK's grid is purely renewable energy. Now, another idea that a commenter came up with was to mandate, for example, in the United States, a, an NEMA 14 to 50 standard in all new attached garages. Then this mandate, then to mandate the conduit from the panel to a location in the garage as a minimum so that pulling wire later is easier. He says, I know it won't happen, but it would be nice and it would be a better policy than the forced installation of a charger in every home as written about in the article. I'm not so sure about that. I think both ideas could work. In fact, why don't we just mandate one or the other in every house? Sounds good to me. Thanks for watching the video. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. And remember, electric car sales are going crazy in the UK. The number one car sold in the month of August. Look at what it was. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.